happy Thursday out there. Um, going to start slowly as always rather than leaping in and throwing up information before people get there because then they feel like they've missed something. So I'll give you a second, a couple of seconds here for people to pop in. Hello people, nice to see your faces. Uh, just wishing you all a happy Thursday and um, I hope you're having a good week, having a good day, um, even well, if you're over further west than us, it's going to be just at the start of the day, so you haven't had a day yet. We're moving into the afternoon here, so it's been a really nice day. I've had a couple of visitors into the shop, which is always lovely. If you're in Cork, just pop on in. Hey, from Toronto. It's a quiet spot because it's hard to get to it. Well, it's not difficult to get to, particularly once you know where it is because there's parking right in front, but often people miss it if um, because it's not directly visible from the street. So it's a little hidden spot. But if you're in Cork and you want to pick up some yarn or jack, come on in. Um, and you might all be very excited here as well because, hey, from Germany. Oh, I love seeing all of your faces pop up. Thank you for joining me. Um, so yeah, this week or today, I should say, from sunny Newfoundland, excellent. Um, today is the launch of the Brutok Clue One. So if you've signed up for the knit along, then we're ready to get started. Everything's up and you're ready to go. So I'm going to talk a little bit, I spend most of the day today chatting about the Brutok knit along, Clue One, what's involved. And if you have any questions about it, or if you're looking and you're going, oh, I don't know where to start, pop the questions up here and I'll see if I can get around to it. Can I also ask all of you there, if you regularly kind of are on Instagram or looking at what I'm putting up on Instagram, we've been kind of changing ever so slightly what we're putting up. Um, and obviously there's always the Instagram lives um, and the tutorials and other bits and pieces. And we're kind of, perhaps putting up a little bit more tutorials um would you what do you want to see up here that's really what i want to ask you is what kind of content would you like up here do you want just tutorials a mix of things little sneak peeks of what i'm working on or do you prefer it all being a surprise um ideas of yarns you can use with different patterns um just pop it up here so we have some ideas as to it's basically uh, what you want to see up there because the Instagram's up there for you. Um, I mean, I have fun putting the content together or rather I should say Nadia does because she does a fantastic job. And you might even pop into the grid earlier on in the week. We were having a little talk about why we knit and all of the various different reasons that you may choose to knit. And it really, it really I think hit a, a chord with a lot of you because there was a huge amount of input and some really, really lovely replies. So thank you all for those replies because it's, it's just lovely to know all of the huge variety of reasons that people will actually sit down and knit. Um, and I does, I mean, the thing that you don't think about that does seem to be popping up is a lot of people because they may have been taught by grandmothers are perhaps people who have who aren't with us anymore that if that's part of their memory of them of them teaching them or perhaps seeing those people knit it's actually a really big link with their past and good memories um, and that's a lovely thing to have an activity in your life that both produces things but also has got just these lovely happy associations so there's a nice happy thought for you today before we move on for the Brutok so if you are joining me on the Brutok. Here's here's Brutok here. I move it up here. Um, if you're joining me on Brutok for the knit along, give me a wave. Um, you should, in terms of being able to access the, I'm going to move her over here because I'm falling over her. Um, in terms of being able to access the videos and all of the rest of us in the PDF pattern that you got originally, you would have a link to the videos and then a discount code so that you don't pay for the videos when you get them for the knit along. Afterwards, they become a separate workshop and it's paid for. So the knit along is well worth joining in. Even if you don't get to the finish line, you'll at least have all the videos there for when you actually want to go do it. So it does make a lot of sense to kind of jump in at the point if you think you are going to go ahead and hey, I see all the faces waving there that are joining us. 
Um, so the first clue I sent out um, on Ravelry and also the download from my website. Um, if you get it from my website, I use an app called Skypilot that's linked in. So that's where the download is going to come from. Sometimes that ends in spam folders, so make sure you check there. Also, there's two accounts. There's a Teachable account for all the classes are, but then it's a different account for Stolen Stitches and the website where you buy the patterns and things. But the Stolen Stitches, where you buy it, make sure you've got an account there because then you can also log in and you have a link for downloads that you would have purchased before. So you'll be able to also, if you're not for whatever reason getting the emails, you can always log in there and you'll be able to find your, your download library. Very same as in Ravelry. So it's a really handy spot to be able to kind of have the things in there together. Now, in terms of chat and all the rest of it, I've got a couple of spots again. The first one is our Knit Hub where you've got the link to access directly, or if you're in the class, there's a little button in the bottom, you can click in there. And that's actually a really good um, place to jump in, to chat with other knitters, and also to post questions up, because it's very convenient for me, because it actually feeds straight through to my phone, all the notifications. So I'm much less likely to miss things. So that's really helpful, because that's often the problem I have with trying to keep up with things, is if I don't get the notification, I have to go and check, and I don't get in somewhere to check, it's going to sit there for longer than I'd like. So the Knit Hub is a really good spot for faster replies, particularly if you've got a more urgent question. Facebook's pretty good too. The Facebook group we have there because most of the um, notifications come through to me. The problem with Facebook, of course, is that the notifications are mixed up with lots and lots of different notifications. So it can get lost, whereas Knit Hub is dedicated to just support. So. It's probably, I would suggest it being the first port of call if you for something urgent. Otherwise, wherever suits you, uh, if, you're, if you're happy to wait for a day or two, or it shouldn't be that long, but um, you never know. Sometimes things have a tendency of getting lost, particularly with the week I've had, where I seem to be running double time. But slowing down now, I'm looking forward to the end of the week, just deep breaths, getting a few larger projects done and, it's going to be really nice. So would you all like to hear more about the, the Brutak Clue 1? I'm guessing you would. If you download your PDF and come take a look, and then as you've probably, anyone who has done an Ishalan week before knows that it's broken down in stages. And as this is top down, it's going to bring you to the end of the underarm. Now, if you've swatched, you've already done brioche and it's brioche worked flat. So it's back and forth in rows, which I think is probably the most straightforward form of, of brioche because you knit one row, you turn around, you knit the next row and it's the same on both sides. So it's lovely, nice, easy rhythm to it. And it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's easier to see what you're doing. So that's all we're going to be doing for this. So you begin here I'll stick her in front casting on all of the stitches across here and this is your drop shoulder so it's going to be from here to here so it's going to be a fairly wide cast on then the next thing we're going to do is with shoulders because they're sloped you want a little higher up here than down here and as usual what we used to do that is we use short rows so I'm using German short rows because they're fairly straightforward to work with brioche so first thing to do is you're going to as on the first row you're going to put a marker on the cast on here and over on the other side here reason for that is when you come back to the front those mark the edge of the shoulders and so you'll know exactly where to pick up the fronts on each side so put the marker on the actual cast on on the knitting not on the needle here so that's a really important thing to do you i mean you can come back afterwards and figure out where it is but just make it easier for yourself then when you're doing German short rows back and forth, if you've done German short rows before, you know that you bring the yarn in front, you pull the yarn over the needle, and then you begin you, after you slip the stitch, and then you begin working the other direction. With German short rows and brioche, one of the problems you can run into is that the German short row double stitch looks really, really similar to brioche stitch, because you know when you've got the knit stitch with the yarn over, over it. So I would suggest when you do the German short rows to put a marker in where you turn. So when you come back the next row, you know that that's a German short row and it's not the brioche stitch. So 
that's really important because they're virtually identical looking sometimes because they, it, they both have that little double stitch construction, so to speak. So I would suggest making sure that you do that. So that is the most complicated part here, doing the short rows back and forth. I've also said in the pattern, if the short rows are doing your head in and you're just going, I can't get this to work, it's driving me mad, just omit it because what that will mean is it'll be straight across here. It will make that slightly shorter, but you can just add a little extra length at the end. So give the short rows a go. If they're really driving you mad and they're just not working for you, it's not the end of the world to omit them. Just move on and check your length as you move further on and perhaps add a little extra length into the, into the sweater. So uh, yeah, my suggestion is, yeah, basically there's certain things that are potentially expendable, but it's not a big deal if they get omitted. It's a nice addition, but it's not essential. So the sloped shoulders to me would be one of those. It's like, if you can add it, you absolutely should. If it's too difficult, just sidestep it. So that is the back and you're going to work down to the underarm size. So I'll move her back again here. Because what you're actually doing here is you stop flat here and that's the depth of your, of your sleeve are your upper body. So if you want a bigger sleeve size, you're going to want to work that a little bit deeper because then you'll have extra stitches that you can pick up here. So remember that whatever depth that's going to be is going to be the sleeve depth. If you do adjust this, make sure you also do go adjust your sleeve because otherwise your pickup ratio is going to be a little off. So that's what that corresponds to. It's different than a normal armhole because it sits right up here. So it's the depth of your actual arm skull around here. But you can see with this, it's sitting further out here. So it is in fact the size of your armhole rather than the actual armhole opening, which would be further up. If you're sizing down a lot, that's one place that you can possibly get caught. Because if you size down, it means that these are going to be pulled up further here and it's going to be a little less of a drop shoulder and that'll sit up higher. So you may want to increase the depth of the armhole and possibly increase the upper sleeve here so that you've got a bit more room and then decrease it. So it doesn't mean that you can't size it down a little bit, but that you need to be aware of the fact that that could get you caught at the arm size here because you, the fact you're relying on the drop shoulder to give you that room around the armhole opening really. So that's the first two things back and figuring out the depth. Next thing you want to move on to is the front of the sweater. So the front here, I know it looks like the lace panel is introduced earlier, but it actually doesn't come in until you've finished the top part because the V is really deep um, because of the fact that your spacing is quite widely and the edging here pulls it all in afterwards. So you're in fact not starting this um, stitch pattern until you join in the round after you finish the armhole openings. So you begin over here, first of all, on your left side and you pick up all those stitches. And this is why it's important to have your marker on the edge of your cast on, because that's going to tell you where you start here and you go right to the edge of the, of the work. Then you're going to work German short rows, the same as you did on the back, but obviously it's just on one side because we don't have the two sides together. So it's just going to be as far as here, turn around, work back, go over here, turn around and work back to get that slope up on the top here. And then once you finish that, the next thing we're doing is these increases, which I actually really nice because it's brioche is so decorative. Just something as simple as an increase just creates just this gorgeous decorative effect. Um, and brioche stitch, if you've done it before, you'll know in order to maintain brioche, you'll always have both double increases and double decreases because that means that you've always got those two stitches to keep that brioche stitch pattern going. So with this, you've got this column here and you're doing a double increase, double increase, double increase. And so it's all growing out from there to shape the neckline. So you come down as far as the side here and you put those stitches to the side and then you come over on this side and you do exactly the same thing. Again, picking up all those stitches, doing your short rows and then doing your neck increases I can see over here, over along the side there. And then once you reach the bottom, you cast on just a couple of stitches here and then you can work back and forth. 
for my size, I was pretty much at the armhole depth there. I think I just had a couple of rows. There was really almost no row, straight rows back and forth. Um, and of course, normally here on the edges of these, you've got um, garter stitch. So it's knit on each side at the start and at the end so that it's easier to keep your brioche stitch and pattern. But once you actually join together, all of those stitches are going to end up being rolled into the brioche stitch pattern. So once you join and you cast on your stitches, the next row there, your edge stitches and the two cast on stitches are just all going to be worked straight across as brioche uh, stitch. And it's the same as when you've got a cast on row. You know, sometimes with brioche, if you've got, when you're starting, because you don't have a yarn over on top of your knit stitches, you're just doing a plain knit stitch instead of a brioche knit, simply because you don't have it yet. Same on the back side, you kind of maintain it. You like slip one yarn over, go to brioche knit. If there's only one stitch, you just do an ordinary knit, slip one yarn over, and you keep going like that in the wrong side row. And then by the time you get to the next right side row, everything is lined up the way it should and it's standard brioche and it's smooth sailing. So you again, obviously then check your front against the back as you want the front and the back of the worth to be the same length. Um, and at that point, you're done with that particular part of the pattern. And obviously the next clue then will move on to the body where you'll also uh, join and work in the round and introduce um, the, the cable lace. I don't know, cable lace pattern in the front. It looks like a cable, but it's worked as lace. So cable lace probably is the best way of putting it. So does that all make sense for anyone who's um, joined the Burtok Knit Along? I hope it does. Um, maybe if you're listening in and you're not joining in, it'll be enough to get you interested and come in and see what it's all about and try it out with us. Um, again, if you have any issues, just come into the Knit Hub or post them up here on the questions and I'll, I'll help as much as I can. Um, and before I finish, I'm just going to give you a very quick pick of a couple of the, anyone who's been watching my stories will know that I've had loads and loads of blasted delivered this week. And so most of it is like ones that I had come out of stock of, or I'm also adding in all of the colors that were for the 2021 club. I've gotten an extra lot of orders of those coming in. And two of these ones here, I actually really like, I think because Nua doesn't have a real charcoal -y black. So this is ghoul, which is um, coal in Irish this one and also the ghoul Leah Marl. I just, I really want to knit a men's sweater or maybe a sweater for myself because I'm a big gray fan in this, like something in ribbing um, with some very interesting increases and decreases, kind of similar to brioche, but possibly just in ribbing, I think would be just so beautiful in this. So I suspect this may be my next Bloster project, but I've got a stack of projects to finish before I get to this one. So I'm going to say goodbye to you and go back to my not much to love to accounting upstairs. I should really just hang out here for ages so that I can, I've got a good excuse not to finish the accounts, right? Um, you're going to make the Durkula first. Oh, very good. Yes. Jump into Durkula. Um, that was my one last week. We've got, this is definitely like the month of releases, a lot of stuff was waiting for deliveries to come and also for sweater weather. Um, man's sweater would be great. Ah, very good. So I'm going to say a bit adieu to you all. Um, have a good end of week and a good weekend and enjoy your knitting. Mm -hmm.